going to be covering the uh, today's inflation data, where we are in the market cycle, different types of interest rate cuts, because I've been getting this a lot recently. The interest rate cuts are bearish and they're not. It depends on what type of interest rate cut it is and um, somewhat where the market is going into that cut. But most important is what is that cut? What type of interest rate cut is it? So we're going to be clarifying that uh, today as well. Um, we're then also going to be looking at portfolio positioning, the changes we've made in recent months, the changes we're considering going forward based on where the market is currently, where we expect it to be in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, 360 days time. Um, and then we're going to be looking at ideas of how to rebalance and where the opportunities may lie against where we may be heavy or may not be heavy i.e in positioning for instance some of us might may be quite heavy in things like popcat solana are there others now are there other players that look attractive that we can rebalance into if we have usdt or your you might look at your popcat bag or your solana bag and that might be too heavy in size and you might say okay let's reduce that down i personally probably am not going to reduce them those down but it's just providing that environment of thought about how to go ahead going forward based on where we see ourselves in the cycle and how the macro is essentially lining up. Let's get cracking. So uh, next slide, please, Victor. So today's inflation data came out, it was positive. Um, and the market other than crypto has responded positively to that relatively. So we had um, the inflation rate, not core inflation, the inflation rate year on year come in at 3%, which is much lower than the 3.3% from last month. And it's lower than the expected for this month of 3.1%. It's coming at 3%. So that's great to see. We've also seen for the first time a negative month on month print. So a minus 0.1% print rather than 0.0% or the expected was 0.1%. It's coming at negative 0.1%. So these are all really positive and core inflation is coming slightly lower again as well. So that's good. We're showing the trend is showing this disinflationary trend or continuation of that disinflationary trend. So the Fed is looking at that and thinking, OK, inflation is coming down. We are on this trend uh, lower. That is good to see. So that gives us the guidance to potentially cut rates. So that is something that's positive because and risk assets are are sort of buoyed by that because at the moment they had. So they raised interest rates. Because inflation was at 9%, they've now raised interest rates to 5.5%, and inflation has come down to, say, 4%, 3%, now in the sort of twos in the in the uh, core. So you're now saying, well, if inflation is at 4% and the interest rate is at 5.5%, we're 1.5% restricted because it's that gap between where the inflation rate is and where the interest rate is. 4% inflation, 5.5% interest rate. So 1.5% of a real rate essentially so technically you're restricted if that inflation rate then falls which is what we're seeing it goes to three and a half three percent two and a half percent and you keep the interest rate the same that gap widens so you're effectively becoming more restrictive as inflation falls so going into this print that suggests to us the fed and the market is still relatively strong it's hanging in there the fed should cut rates to normalize policy and that's good for risk assets so that's what was read into the print today even though bitcoin has sold off and the equities have sold off slightly the s&p 500 but we've seen the dollar come down which is very important and you've seen bond yields come down which is really important as well alongside this for the first time in a long time the russell 2000 which is small cap companies has really moved it's up four percent today which is quite a big move and small cap companies really gain from interest rate cuts because they now don't have to, it, it's cheaper for them to service their debts and small cap companies are, are hit by higher interest rates because the cost on their debt and they have a lot of debt so the cost on their debt has risen where the big cap companies aren't really hit by those interest rates which is why big cap tech has gone higher and smaller cap companies haven't but we're now seeing today for the first time that rotation out of big cap, which is why the S&P has come down slightly, and more into the small cap companies. So potentially today is the first day of moving into a slightly more risk on environment of, of um, broadening out in the main market. 
So that broadening out to smaller cap companies will be good for crypto, but it's because it's the same type of assets. They're smaller cap companies risk on assets further along the risk curve, although Bitcoin has sold down with tech with like sort of headline tech today. So overall, the inflation rate coming in lighter today suggests that the Fed can cut rates in September. They should really be doing it in July, but they've sort of not left themselves any room to go and do that. So it's more likely that we're going to see the Fed forward guide in late July at the 31st of July uh, Fed meeting that they're going to cut for September. And today is the first day we've seen that broadening out from big tap, big cap tech into the smaller cap tech or smaller cap companies. So that is positive overall. It's the first time we've really seen that. Now, this this environment or trend may take more time to play out, may take another month, two months, so we actually get into those interest rate cuts. But we're starting to see a potential change in the dynamic, and this will be positive for crypto. Next slide, please, Victor. So where are we in the market? Um, we're going to go through where we are in the Bitcoin halving in terms of that. So we've got the sort of macro context outlaid now, and we're going to sort of get to that a little bit more with the um, interest rate element as well. But essentially where we are today is every four years we have the Bitcoin halving. Miners come under pressure after the Bitcoin halving because they're now getting paid half as amount of Bitcoin. And if the price of Bitcoin doesn't double immediately, they're essentially now losing out on revenues. So you have this sort of like big supply pressure going into the markets. We're going to cover that. And then we're going to cover, no, that's correct, the minor uh, capitulation. But on top of that, we have the excess supply on top of that as well from the Mt. Gox, the German government selling. You guys have been seeing this on Twitter. That is now starting to come to an end. Um, or the German government part is the Mt. Gox will start to come to an end as well. So it's going to take a little bit more time, more weeks, but let, let's dive into it. Uh, next slide, please, Victor. So I hope you guys can see the sort of blown up version of this chart. But essentially what we've done is shown the Bitcoin price on a logarithmic chart. Um, now, the vertical yellow lines are the Bitcoin halving. So we've shown the one in 2016, 2020 and 2024. Not really prior to that because price action wasn't really, it was driven by the halvings, but it wasn't as affected by macro, for instance. You understand what we're saying. So essentially what you have is after these um, Bitcoin halving events, miners are usually selling a decent amount of their new supply that they're earning into the market to basically cover their costs because they're now being paid half as much Bitcoin in reward for mining, for doing the work to sort of support the network or to let, let the network run. But the price of Bitcoin has stayed the same or hasn't gone up or down that much. Say it's gone up 20% or down 20%, it doesn't really matter. They're being paid half the amount of Bitcoin in reward terms. So the actual dollar value is now half, their revenues have halved but their costs have stayed the same. So essentially the natural environment there is that inefficient miners are wiped out. They can no longer operate because they're just not profitable. Or the Bitcoin price needs to go higher. And that's usually the case. The Bitcoin price goes higher. So as you can see here from this chart, you have the supply overhang and price every time after a halving for a number of months, you have the miners selling. So it keeps price somewhat suppressed. So let's look at 2016, 2020 and look at now to see is this any different? Is this typical? Let's have a look. So after 2016, we can see that, and this is a, a weekly chart. So every candle is a week. So we can see in 2016, price basically didn't break up from the highs for about 133 days, give or take, you know. So 133 days is about uh, four or five months. So it's four or five months after the halving. So that's one example. And then price really started to, to go up much more significantly from there. If we look at 2020, it took 161 days for price to break up above that sort of resistance line, which was around the, I believe it was 12K was the mark. But it took about 161 days. So what's that? It's five months, six, six months, I think it's about, uh, no, five months. So it's about five and a half months. So it's, it's a quite a decent period of time. So you have this sort of um, supply being put into the market, keeping price suppressed for a period of time. Now, this is the flushing out of the inefficient miners, and we'll show that in the next chart. But essentially, after the halving, it's three, four, five, six months of miners dumping their supply into the market because they're desperate to be paying their costs. They're trying to survive. They're desperate to be paying or keeping up with their bills, covering their costs. So they have to sell the, the, their revenues, which is the new Bitcoin being issued to them. Um, so look at where we are today. 
the halving was uh, late April, mid April, late April. So if we were to say, okay, extrapolate this out again, it's going to be four, five, six months. Let's say it's going to be four months. So late April, late April, uh, late May, late June, late July, late August. So if we say late August by a minimum, that probably gives us another five, six weeks as a minimum. Say it gets into September, but you're supported by an interest rate cut as well. We still have more time for this sort of like range bound price action to be with us. It's going to take more time for, you know, to flush out these inefficient miners and for price to start moving higher. So we probably have another month, maybe another two months. But now is the time to really be on your game, paying attention to this and rebalancing into the stuff that has shown strength prior because we can expect what's going to happen in the next one to three months. So you want to be well positioned for that. So this is the time to really be paying attention and be making those adjustments or changes to your portfolio. Um, next slide, please, Victor. So next slide we have is the hash ribbon. So this essentially shows when miners are capitulating and you can see the black um, line is the Bitcoin price and the pink stripes or strips, as you can call them, is minor capitulation periods. Now, we get these minor capitulation periods when prices are really low. So bear market bottoms, because obviously, you know, the miners are selling their Bitcoin into the market and they're getting pretty low prices. So they're sort of really under pressure under that scenario. And also just the, the period just post a Bitcoin halving. And you can see these periods. So if we look in 2016 that 2016 one just before price went up there was a slight minor capitulation and then the big one was in the 2018 bear, late 2018 bear market that's all when price was really low all the others have been pretty much at halvings or when prices have crashed so we had one at covid and then just after covid you had another minor capitulation because obviously there was the uh, Bitcoin halving just after covid in 2020 as soon as covid was priced into markets in March 2020 i think the uh, in that April, so a month later, was the next Bitcoin halving. So you had a minor capitulation in the March because of COVID and a minor capitulation in the April uh, or May, whenever it was, because of the Bitcoin uh, halving in 2020. And then you saw the next one, next major one, was the summer of 21. And that was when uh, China banned the, the mining. Um, there was a minor capitulation there as well, which is when we had the big drop in 2021 from 57k, 60k down to the 30ks. And it was really sharp, really quick. Um, and then again, the next set of minor capitulations have been at the end. So there was those lows um, in mid-2022 and then also at the FTX bottom. So prices were really suppressed to the downside, putting pressure on miners because they just are not getting the dollars in for their Bitcoin because they're only getting 18k per Bitcoin rather than getting 30k, 35k per Bitcoin. So they're becoming really stressed to pay their costs now. And you're seeing the same again now, which is that after the halving, despite Bitcoin price being up four times from where it was six years ago, eight years ago, you're now seeing another mine capitulation post halving in this, you know, br relatively brief period within a few months post halving again. And it's these pink strips that show that. So what you're essentially looking for is where these orange squiggles are. That's the hash rate. What you're looking for is as the hash rate comes up and then turns lower. So it usually trends up trends up and then it has these periods where it turns lower that's the minor capitulation what you then want to see is the 30 day simple moving average and the 60 day simple moving average find a bottom and slope up and that's usually the end of minor capitulation so what we're looking for now is this has come down it's sloping lower we'll wait for that to bottom turn and come out and that will tell us when the minor capitulation is essentially finished so that's what we're waiting for or queuing up for essentially now uh, next slide please victor So, again, in the context of this is that we're figuring out where we are in the cycle. So now we look at Bitcoin price performance since the cycle lows. We can see that the blue uh, blue line is Bitcoin's price in the 2015 to 2018 cycle from the lows. Green is from 2018 to 2022. And the black is the 2022 uh, FTX bottom to where we are today. How much more time there is potentially left, et cetera, et cetera. You, you get the picture. You can see where we are. We're still relatively low, relatively suppressed. We can see in the other two cycles, you had this movement along relatively steady, but trending upwards. And then you had the sort of explosions higher. Obviously, 2017 was much, much more because Bitcoin's come from a much lower market cap to, uh, you know, obviously more market cap than it did in the 2021 cycle. So you can see now from that black line, that's the 2022 
cycle currently. You can see we're still not early, but we're still relatively mid cycle. We're not towards the end at all. And it doesn't suggest that we're at this like peak euphoria and we've topped essentially. It still suggests, it shows that we're something similar to the summer of 2019, that DeFi summer. It's, it's something along those lines where you've had this level of excitement, but it's not been this like retail driven euphoric top. We're not really there yet. Maybe that comes in four months time, maybe it comes in 10 months time, but it's somewhere we're probably in that bracket. But essentially this suggests to us that we have another good six to nine months, somewhere in there before we see that sort of price action. And hopefully this sort of chart displays that in a more um, clear way. Next slide, please, Victor. So on this next slide, this is just one main on-chain indicator that we look at is the MVRVZ score. This has pulled back more substantially now. And this metric basically just shows when Bitcoin is overvalued relative to its fair value. So when it moves, when the orange line oscillator moves into that red band, that essentially means that we're overvalued relative to Bitcoin's fair value. Fair value is worked out based on the electrical cost, production cost, blah, blah, blah. Um, of mining the Bitcoin. Um, so we can see here that we're not really extended at all. And we got a little bit extended in those March highs, but essentially in this cycle now, and look, this is a chart from the last seven years, eight years, so it's quite a big chart. Um, you can see that we're actually at relatively light levels again now, and we're at 57K, 58, whatever the price is. Um, 58K, say. Yeah, so we're at, we're at 58K. And it's showing that it's, you know, it's pulled back quite substantially. So when we look at these overall market indicator metrics, this suggests to us that we are where we are. We are where we're supposed to be at this point in the cycle. There's probably six to 10 months remaining of this cycle, somewhere between four and 12 months, somewhere in there. So it's quite a wide range. But this suggests to us that we haven't reached that euphoric top yet. We're still somewhat not early, but mid cycle for, before we have that euphoric top. This is the main on-chain market indicator metric that shows that. Next slide, please, Victor. So this chart is a little bit uh, hard to read. It's hard to compress it all in one. So this is going to be on US interest rates because we keep getting this a lot and we want to address this. So essentially, and we posted about this um, a good few weeks ago with one of the charts that's about to come up. This is essentially the S&P 500. Each candle is one month. So this chart is from 1983 to 2025. You might be thinking, Tom, why are we talking about the S&P 500 over the last 40 years? This is nothing to do with me. I don't care about this. Let's focus on memes. But it's to show you that we're getting these arguments that are wrong. They're, they're, they're not correct. So you can see here that the price, the, the S&P 500 price is the blue and white candlesticks, the bit on top. And the bottom, just focus on the red, is US interest rates. Every time US interest rates are cut, the market seems to come down overall. But it's sometimes, it, most of the time it comes down because there's three types of interest rate cuts, which is a normalization cut, a panic cut, and a recessionary cut. Now, panic and recessionary cuts bring the market down. A normalization usually helps the market go forward, but they're just not that um, often. They're relatively rare. So in looking at this chart, very simply from, from the outset, you would say every time the S&P 500 comes, sorry, every time interest rates are cut, they go down, market goes down. Well, yes, most of the time it's because uh, COVID, a panic cut or a recession cut. Uh, next slide, please, Victor. We'll explain the interest rates and then we'll go back and dive into that chart again to show where we are at each point and what that could mean for us this time. There's interest rates. Which type of interest rates are we? Sorry, which type of interest rate cuts are we at today? And what might that mean for the market going forward? So as I've been saying, three types of cut. The normalization cut, this is reduced how restrictive policy is, in this case, because inflation has come down. So same as I explained before, when the inflation rate is at 4% and the interest rate is at 5.5%, it's 1.5% restrictive. If the inflation rate comes down to 3%, you're now 5.5% interest rate, 3% inflation, 2.5% restricted. So you're more restrictive. So really, a normalization cut would be to bring that down by 100, the interest rate down to 4.5%. So it's at 4.5% interest rate and 3% inflation, still 1.5% restrictive. So you're, you're still, the real rate is still restrictive, but it's not growing, it's not increasing. So you're not putting, you're not putting more pressure on the economy because the more, 
if they keep allowing the restrictiveness to increase, that puts greater pressure on the economy. And that is what could push us into that hard landing scenario. The second type of cut is a panic cut. This happens quickly and is in response to a sudden crisis. COVID is the best example of this. They literally dropped the interest rate overnight uh, to zero. Then you have a recession cut. Now, these are slightly more slow. They're, they're, not, they're not a panic cut. They're, they're a cutting of interest rates, but they're slow. It's essentially the Fed and other central banks are cutting interest rates because they want to stimulate the economy to make the cost of borrowing money cheaper, to encourage businesses to borrow money, expand, employ people, then people can spend. And they're trying to sort of, you know, stimulate the economy to grow itself out of the problem, essentially. So these are three types of cuts. It's really important to know what each one is. And we can look back historically and say to ourselves, OK, when has each one come into effect and what did the market do? Let's have a look. So next slide, please, Victor. So the main part here is just showing you data. And I shared this in the market, this chart in a market update. It was sent to me by a member here. So it's brilliant. I, I'm really sorry. I can't remember who it was that sent it to me. But for, thanks for bringing this up to me because I went away, had a look at the uh, research firm that released it and read the report. It was good. Um, so the top part here essentially shows you the type of cut, when it came, and the one month, three month, six month, 12 month performance of the S&P. But let's look at it at the bottom. You have a normalization cut, a panic cut, and a recession cut. You can see the normalization cut, the markets go up pretty good, they go up. Well, not really on the first month, but three months, six months, and 12 months, they go up. And on the month one, it's, it's down 0 0.6, 0.7% as an average and a median. No problem. On the panic cuts, they're actually probably better because they're so stimulative to markets. Because yes, you get that initial puke out, but they're so stimulative. So that is actually the best one. But in that first few weeks, you are going to go through a huge drawdown. So panic cut is good for markets uh, if you had cash on the side and you was able just to buy in after the initial puke. Um, but the recession cut is obviously the worst, as we can see from the bottom. The one month, three month, six month and 12 month performance is always bad. Down 2%, 14%, 12%, 11%, not good at all. So it's, it's not really where you want to be. Next slide, please, Victor. So we're now showing this chart. It's a little bit complicated. I, I think I'm not exactly sure what we're putting in the market update tomorrow. I, I will figure that out more once I've gone away tonight and had a look. But we may put this in the market update tomorrow. Um, but essentially what I've done is I've highlighted at each point in time what the uh, green is a normalization cut. Uh, red is a panic cut, yellow is a recessionary cut. And you can see at each point I've highlighted on the interest rates where each one is and then what the market has done. Mostly when you have the panic cut, the market pukes initially, like quite a lot, and then it rebounds pretty quickly. It's sort of a V-shaped bottom and up it goes. The normalization cut, the market tends to sort of figure itself out, doesn't know what to do, it stays flat, and then it grinds higher, which is essentially what I think we're going to get here, even though there might be a little bit of a stalling in the next month or so. And that stalling, I think, will be a movement out from mega cap tech and broadening out into smaller cap coins, um, smaller cap companies. Um, so that's what the um, normalization cut will do. You can see from the recession cut, that it's usually a sort of sl slow, gradual movement down in the interest rate and markets just don't like it. They just come down with it. You see a movement into um, commodities, gold, all that kind of stuff rather than. Uh, or bonds rather than um, and gold and the equity market just goes down. So that's a different type of interest rate cut. And this chart, I've not really seen it anywhere else. I, this is the first. So I think this is the first time someone's sort of identified the different rate cuts, types of rate cuts and what the market has done under those scenarios. Um, we're now going to be moving into a period which is a normalization cut. And you can see from the normalization cuts, they're green. The market doesn't know what to do in the first month or two. And then it begins to grind higher. So that's potentially where we're at. And again, I've explained already, we might see that broadening out from the mega cap tech to the smaller cap companies. So overall, that's the environment that we're potentially moving into and pricing in in August, but starting in September and going into October, November, December. You have the US elections as well on top of that, that this isn't even brought up into this. But um, I hope that's made sense with the type of cuts that are there. Thanks for that, Victor. Um, yeah, I hope that makes makes sense with the type of cuts we're moving into. So whenever you hear this, uh, you know, interest rate cuts are bearish for risk assets. You have you have to understand what the what the 
reason is for the cut and you see it on twitter all the time someone uploads and goes oh interest rate cut. It's, it's not correct you know we've, we've we can identify this these three types of cuts the key is what is it and we can see in this environment it's most likely going to be a normalization cut if powell holds on too long and he doesn't he needs to reduce the interest rate otherwise it's becoming too restrictive and you know there's not a fed meeting in august he's now like they've given themselves no room or they they rely too much on forward guidance, which means he has to forward guide a rate cut, which means he's going to do that on July 31st, which then means, well, the next opportunity is to do it. He can do it. They can drop interest rates whenever they like. But if they did that, it would look like a panic. So he has to set it up and then he has to do it on um, in the September meeting. So that means you have June's data to come in, July's data to come in, August data to come in. It's three months worth of data. If it's the case where the data starts to weaken slightly faster, you could be looking at hard landing and then we've got a problem because that's a recession. So Powell needs to, you know, get his act together a little. The Fed in general needs to get the act together a little bit here because as, in, as inflation is coming down a lot, the rate is becoming more and more restrictive. So hopefully they, you know, sort of turn up a little bit here and get this sorted and get the interest rates back down and just normalize rather than leave it long. The longer they leave it, the more chances of a hard landing. So that's the difference. Um, but let's now move on to um, portfolio repositioning. So next slide, please, Victor. And we have the setup, the context, the macro context, the on-chain context, where we are in this cycle, where the miners are, is this typical, is this not? We can see that it is typical. Where we are currently in terms of the on-chain setup and the miners after halvings, this is quite typical. If we then look at the macro setup, we're going into interest rate cuts. We understand it's a normalization rather than a panic or recessionary cut at this moment in time. And the markets do well under that environment or under... Um, yeah, under those conditions that it, that it does well. So the setup there is 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 all OK. So in terms of positioning where we are and we sort of thought we'd have a slow summer. So fine. So in terms of positioning, we thought it was quite euphoric in the March period and the April period. So we decided to move into more April. We moved into this barbell strategy, which was moving ourselves out of all the you know pure crap, which is these memes that are. Um, not blue chip memes, they're real low cap. You need liquidity for them to go higher. We moved out most of those and we consolidated into Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, and then Dog with Hat and Popcat. Because th what that did is that allowed us to still get the upside if crypto goes higher, especially with the allocation to Dog with Hat and Popcat. But we also still have the three majors. And now they have come down substantially 20%, 30%. But if you look at alts, they've come down 60%, 70%. 80%. And that's what we wanted to avoid. We wasn't sure if we were 100% going to be right. So we still wanted to say, okay, well, we want to be positioned here in case we're wrong and that we get the upside. Um, but we understand that if we're in the blue chip memes and the majors, our downside is going to be somewhat more limited. Even though Dogwood Fat has come down a lot, Popcat, not so much. It's basically at the same price because it feels like that's the next one that's going to move and the market is sniffing that out. So when liquidity comes back, Popcat is the one that likely goes and pulls a five, six X where dog with hat might just double in the next month or, two, or the next couple of months. Um, so what we look for here is an opportunity to say, where do we think we are with the majors pricing? So Bitcoin and then the big caps index, because that will give us more of an indication. And we can look at also how bad do alts look here? Do they, do they, are they starting to look so bad that they're actually attractive price wise? That's what we're going to try and identify. So, and, and then that's how we can choose to make um, the relevant changes or changes that have a good risk reward that then produce good gains for us in the coming months. But essentially we're just trying to like weigh up everything now to see, okay, what looks attractive price wise and what doesn't look attractive price wise? Because we're in this more consolidated stable portfolio. So is there the opportunity to branch out of that? That's what we're going to try and find out. So next slide, please, Victor. So this is just the Bitcoin price. This is where we are currently. Obviously I've screenshotted this from earlier. So we've come down a little bit since do we go into the 48 Ks, 46 Ks? I don't know. Do we go back and retest 52 K? I think that's a possibility. Um, I would be looking to buy in again then for Bitcoin. That's what my feeling is for Bitcoin. But we have seen when Bitcoin has started to, to move down, 
alts and memes have bled, puked out. <clears throat> and then when Bitcoin has done its last, like, more, <clears throat> more significant move lower, memes and alts, they then didn't do that final puke out either. It's like they've done all their pricing into the downside. So we want to look at that. Is that going to be the case again from a more zoomed out perspective? So with Bitcoin, I think we could retest 52, 53, possibly. Um, but I would be looking at that as value territory. And I think memes would have probably have bottomed by then, if that makes sense. Uh, next chart, please, Victor. So this is the big caps index, and this is dominated by Sol mainly. So we can see here that we've gone into that sort of $100 level. It's pulled right back to 65. So a meaningful move lower. Um, and we found support there. Could it go to 50, which would be another sort of 25, 20, 20-ish, uh, 22% um, decline from here? Possibly we could. But you'd be looking at that as opportunities because if Seoul went from 140 to 120, we'd be buying it up. So that's just providing some context there. There's other coins in this. There's AVAX, DOT, Chainlink, Matic that make up the big caps index, but we're not really interested in them. We're just using those as a gauge. So if this was to make a 15 cent pullback and test that $50 area, the one we'd go for is Solana. And that would give us the sort of green light to say, OK, we've made a more substantial pullback now, even though we've already done a substantial pullback. You just want to be holding your bags at this level. But if it does another 15, 20 percent pullback, you probably want to be chipping in. Next slide, please, Victor. This is the mid caps index and you can see this has come back much more substantially. It's come back from 29 all the way now back down to like 12, having bounced from the support at 11. Does it move it into sub 11? Possibly. But again, you're probably looking at this as like, if we are where we are, if we're right as to where we are in this cycle, you probably be probably want to think about putting some capital to work. Now, in the alts, they're more risky. So you want to get small positions, possibly, in the coming weeks. And then as we start to get these green lights, the macro green light is the broadening out into the Russell 2000 companies happening. And are we seeing a sort of movement out of big tech into those Russell 2000 companies? If we start to see more and more of that, you would build more of a more position in these mid cap company, um, in these mid cap coins that we're seeing here because they've come down from 29 down to the support at 11. So it's a big it's a big move down, a 60 percent, 70 percent move down. So from this mid caps index, which is um, it's a uh, it's AVAX dot link. Uh, Matic. So it's it's that without Solana, essentially. So that's what, um, yeah, well, this is a large caps index, but yeah, anyway, we don't have the small caps. It's just wrong titling here. But uh, yeah, so you're looking at this as somewhat more value territory. And this is, again, we're not going to be buying those coins, but it's a gauge of where the market is at. Next slide, please, Victor. So this is small caps, but it's not. It's like mid caps. It's just wrong titling. But you can see here we went all the way up to 14 and we're now back to five, six. So you're looking at a 65, 70 percent drawdown. This is starting to be value territory where you start to say to yourself, well, I don't want a big position in this stuff, but maybe the risk reward is becoming attractive again here. Now, again, you don't want the big position. So you say to yourself, OK, we're looking for that macro green light. We're looking for the broadening out in the market. So if we are getting those things, potentially, we'll start building a small position. And as you get more and more of those signs, you increase your position. And we really might be doing that between our timeline, maybe between, say, now and September. And as you get more of those signs, you get more evidence of the broadening out. If we're right, if that happens and you get more and more evidence, you would then start to build or increase your positions in these alts or in these sort of... Um, very uh, risk risk on low cap memes, for instance, like the ones that come to mind now, probably more things like uh, USA, th those ki those kind of coins, because you have the dog with hat and your pop cat as your blue chips. Um, and it's everything else that is more the sort of um, real risk on stuff that you need that excess liquidity for. So, again, they were using the small caps index, mid cap index as a gauge of where the market is. Our price is starting to come into that territory where you think, hmm, the risk reward is actually slightly OK here. We should think about building some kind of positions in the coming months if we get those macro green lights and the broadening out. And we will we will look to diversify more out of the Bitcoin and ETH and into some of this other more risk on stuff if we get more evidence or a further continuation that's potentially started today 
of those macro green lights and of the uh, broadening out, out effect in the stock market. Uh, next slide, please, Victor. So we're looking at Solana chart here. Again, we'll, we'll be very brief with this because when looking at this, we've mostly said, OK, around the 120 area or sub that area will lay a bit. I have USDT bids below 120. And if they fill in the night or, you know, just a panic bid, what a, a panic drop down. Great. I'll take it. So that's just what I'm playing with uh, Solana now, knowing that I'm happy to add to my bags. Next slide, please, Victor. So dog with hat and pop cat are the two major blue chip memes. Now, I think a lot of you guys will be bigger exposed or much more exposed to pop cat. So you're probably not looking to add exposure there, even though it's probably got, I think it'll probably outperform dog with hat in the coming months. Um, yeah, I do think it, I do think it will outperform. Um, but we already, or me personally, and I think a lot of you guys are similar, have big exposure to PopCat. So I'm looking at Dog With Hat as the one that's in better value territory, and I still think will produce good gains. So when I look at this, I think to myself, mm, the chart does not look great. Potentially, there's a movement down from this 165 area, and we get a move into the 150s, 140s, maybe even 130s. But again, similar to Solana, where I'm layering those bids, those orders, with USDT at 120, 118, 116, 114, but you get the idea. I'm layering those in at 142, 138, 133 for dog with hat. Pop cat, I'm not really doing that with, but dog with hat, I am. Again, because I'm looking to build more exposure in dog with hat, but pop cat, I'm not really. So, yeah. Um, next chart, please, Victor. So, this is just pop cat. We'll talk through the TA. Basically, it needs to get above 55 cents. That's the key level. And the support is going to be that prior zone between 32 and 34 cents, most likely. Hopefully, the 40 cent level holds, but the, the main level is at 32 to 34 cent level. So for those that are in just solely sat in USDT um, and are new to Cryptonary, for instance, and looking for positioning, we would look for bids below 40 cents, maybe at 32 to 34 cents. They may or may not get filled. Hopefully they do get filled. But if you're one of those guys, we would look to build a portfolio in those three coins mostly. Um, and also Bitcoin, some ETH as well. ETH can do well, but it's very volatile at the moment. And I'd still rather, as mad as it sounds, with us, um, ETH ETF coming, I'd still rather be positioned in Solana. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are with everything. Next slide, please, Victor. So we'll move on to questions. But overall, just to sort of um, too long didn't read this uh, stream. We are typically where we're supposed to be in this market cycle. Interest rates are potentially going to come down. Well, they should be coming down because the Fed need to bring them down to maintain the level or reduce the level of restriction because it's actually become too restrictive as inflation has come lower. The S&P usually does well under that environment. So overall, we're set up to potentially have another tricky month or two. But beyond that, we should be looking to have a really good next few months. Um, you know, sort of looking from September through to the end of the year. That's the current feeling. And we will look to see that if all of those things do go as we expect over the next month or two, um, that's when we look to diversify more into the risk on stuff and we'll identify that those coins and those plays in the coming weeks, in the coming month or two. Uh, but yeah, please fire over any questions you have and we'll get th through through to answering some of them. Okay, uh, two rate cuts this year. I think we get two rate cuts this year, yes. Um, I don't know if they do November because they'll be politically, you know, under pressure or whatever. Um, I think they'll want to aid Biden even or, or whoever the Democrat nominee will be. Um, that seems to be changed. That situation seems to be changing by the day at the moment. I think they do September. I think they do November. And I think they actually probably do December as well. So I think we get three. But let's see. I think definitely two. I think we probably get three, which should be good for us. Uh, next set of questions. Uh, market update will be tomorrow. So around 12 months from the cut, we should be near the top. Uh, no, I think it'll be maybe 10 to 12 months from now. 
uh, is where the top will be. Because I think if Trump gets in and the policies are inflationary, it could be a problem. And then they might talk about having to raise rates again. And oh, yeah, it'll be chaos. Um, I think I think the next bear market is is pretty pretty bad, but it should, you should be seeing that as a phenomenal opportunity. Every three four years, we're given this chance where Bitcoin sells off seventy percent, and you can buy it back if you sell it towards the top and buy it back towards the lows. Which using the on chain data is relatively straightforward. I know it sounds mad, but it's relatively straightforward. You won't get the sort of like the proper top or the proper bottom, but you'll get within ten fifteen percent of each. Um, so yeah. Um, so you should be looking at it as a grateful opportunity. Really try to milk it for everything that you'll get or you can get over the next three, six, nine, twelve months, possibly uh, somewhere between six and ten months. Uh, really try to milk it. We'll, we'll cash out. We'll go into USDT. If some of you want to stay in Bitcoin, go for it. I will go fully into USDT and I'll look to rebuy everything 70, 80, 90 percent lower. I think Bitcoin probably only goes down 60 percent this time um, because I just think there'll be more. The TradFi guys will be more wise to it. Um, but all your alts, maybe your Solanas go down 85%. So sweet. We'll, we'll take it. Great opportunity. Um, do you think it's a good idea to sell Pop and Whiff now so we can buy them cheaper later? No. Um, I have lost coins doing this myself because those are the positions I'm actually somewhat emotional to. Um, Trading-wise, I've as some of you guys have been seeing, um, I've been rinsing the leverage trading. I've been rinsing the meme coin trading in the last few months. Um, but pop cap bags, no. I'm down. I don't know how many I'm down, but it's not many. It's in comparison. I think I'm down about 10,000 uh, coins, which is about it's about 5K um, overall um, in terms of coins. But I have loads loads more than that so i'm fine and i've sort of learned my lesson there to say you know i'm I'm too emotional to that play so i leave it i think it can do very well i think it's the one that can make you know rather than what i thought i'd earn out of this bull market i think i can potentially earn five times more than that because i have a pop cat bag for instance because there's other meme play and meme plays that are doing really well i rotate those into soul and i you know you keep rotating back and forth just through the trades but I wouldn't do that if I if I was in your shoes or in me and my shoes. I'm not doing that now. I'm looking to put soul into things and generate more soul. Um, pop and whiff. I'm not looking to sell like that. It, it's something that I'll sell, hopefully into peak euphoria. Um, is it changed the price of popcat officially by Cryptonate from one dollar to three dollar in six months? I don't know if it's an official change. I don't know. I think we see north of one dollar. I think we probably see north of three dollars. Um, I. I don't want to get involved in commenting on official changes at this moment in time, uh, just because of what's happened in the group over the last like five days or so, um, three days. Um, I don't know. You'll have to check the most recent reports. Um, but I think we will see still see it well north of three dollars. Um, why do you think the market reacted this way today after the results were good? The market acted positively an hour later with the greens became red. And you, yeah, it's just I think it's just overall market weakness at the moment because there is still this supply overhang. So anytime price goes up substantially, it's being sold into. But that will eventually end. The miners will come to the end of that in the next month or two. The Mount Gox will come to the end of that in the next month or so. Um, the German government will come to that in the next week or two, you know, the, at the rate they're selling at. So that will come to an end. I feel like with crypto at the moment, we are a bit of a coiled spring waiting to, to go, to be honest. But I think it's going to take another month or two. Min I think relatively minimum. Um, another month minimum, I'd say. But, but let's go from there. Will the market start pricing in the first rate cut? Oh, will the market start pricing in the first rate cut after the FOMC from July in case Powell give the signs of it? No, they've already started pricing in. Um, by the time Powell says we're going to most likely do it, it'll be 85% priced in. Um, wow, so 10, 12 months to the top. Possibly, I'm not sure. Who? It, it's so hard to know. But based on the data I've shown you guys today, based on what the setup is, a can I say a, an educated guess? Who knows? I'd say it's maybe an educated guess that it will be somewhere between December and June of next year, the top. Who knows? Um, best to cut losses in Biden over 60% and reinvest into pop around 40 or blue chips, not financial advice, of course. So if it was any other position that was like a crap play, I'd say yes. But Bowden is a tricky one because if he stays in the race, 
it should really reprice higher, even though he he I can't see him winning the the presidential race, but it should reprice higher. But the reason it sold off so dramatically is because he's probably going to step step aside and let someone else do it. And if that is the case, then the coin is not worth anything. Um, so Bowden is a weird one. It's a difficult one, Bowden, to be honest, because of that reason, because it is so narrative driven. And if he does just step aside, I think it plummets. <laughs> so, um, but it probably plummets on the day and the next day it probably rebounds 30, 40%. So I would probably look at that as an opportunity, to be honest, once you see the 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 big sell-off initially, I'd probably buy that just as a trading opportunity. But that's really degen of me. So um, who knows? Uh, what about Trent play and what will probably happen when Biden and Bowden step out? I think Trent will continue to do well. Trent is one I would feel more confident in in buying. Um yeah, yeah, that, that's it. I don't need to cover more of that, really. If Bowden steps out, step, yeah. Your opinion with your eyes, what price you think it will be more than one? Do I don't, sorry, I don't know what that question is. Again, I have an average buy of sold at 143. Would you sell it to buy it lower or is it a decent average? No, I would look to just keep buying more, find more dollars from somewhere and... Not financial advice. This is just a suggestion. This is just for entertainment purposes. Blah blah. Um, no, I I would those core bags that you really like, fully believe in. Chopping in and out of them, it's not the right way to go. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I've done that previously and done well at times and not done well at times. So it's and I've sort of learned my lesson a cycle or so, uh, well a cycle ago, not to do that. So this time I haven't done that. And I've tried to be techy and tactical and do that with Popcat. And it's cost me about 10,000 tokens overall, which is nothing. In, it is, it's fine in comparison to my size, but it's just not worth the the emotional stress that you'll put yourself through trying to do it. If anything, I'd say find another way to get more USDT and and buy more at the lows. Leave those orders at 120, 118 and see if they feel if they don't. Well, we can rotate to some memes once we're in more risk on territory again. Um. English or Spanish? Come on. What do you think? Um, next question. Will it take retail coming in for Popcat to see north of three dollars? Yeah, I think so. Because at the moment, it seems we need risk on to come in again. And that's when we'll see the depth of the next moves because we just we need new money in now. Like it's all I think a lot of the crypto. Um, the crypto lads have repriced now they've moved into like Solana was the big move and then the move into the Solana casino into the memes bubble or meme casino that's all happened now we need new fresh money to come in and that will likely come in when there's interest rate cuts and liquidity kicks up again after the summer that's my feeling anyway um I still have Pendle Render and Nos would you rotate all of that into salt at this point so I do actually have some Render and some Nosana myself I'll probably pick them up again in the, that those are two I've got my eye on for the coming month or two that if we do see this macro green light i .e. fed interest rate cuts which I think we're getting um and the broadening out from the uh, mega tap mega cap tech into the um smaller cap companies it's those kind of coins that I have my eye on pendle I just I don't know enough about pendle myself I haven't taken the time to read into it but I know it's rated relatively highly so that's probably one I should add to my list as well personally um so, yeah, I, I wouldn't look again, look, going back to those those um, lo, um, big, medium and small cap indexes we went through before. A lot of those stuff, a lot of those things are down 60 percent, 70 percent. So it's probably not the time to be selling the time to be doing it. The time to be doing that was moving into that consolidation portfolio, that barbell portfolio that we did in April. Um, obviously, it's now made its move 60, 70 percent down. So you don't really want to sort of crystallize the loss. If anything, in the next month or so, you want to be looking at picking that stuff up. Oh, so, a question on Ken. I'm not going. I'm not going to answer this. I, I don't know where I personally stand with this in terms of what I can and can't say. Um, I just saw it in the chats. I thought it was a great um, meme degen type play, and I thought the meme was funny. Same as Doland. Same as Tremp. Same as um, Bowden. So I aped into it at a really low market cap. Very small. Very uh, small size. Not with any size. 
um but it's not been covered by cryptonary it's not be i just saw it in the chats you know i've taken some like backlash for it as well because it looked like i was endorsing it and we just haven't done the research on it yet i've said i won't sell my bags i think they're in real great profit but i said i won't sell my bags if it becomes something then maybe i can sell at a later date but if it rides down to zero i will take my investment down to zero just so that it doesn't look like you know um yeah, I don't know. We we saw it very early, but um, we'll get some more clarity on this in the in the next week or so. Possibly, I'll find out more what the situation is. Hopefully, from the the guys that may or may not do research on it. Again, I I can't really say too much on this now, um, just because of what was sort of um said at the time. Um, but I, I the bit I bought in that time when I was in the DGen channel or the Meme Coin channel, I haven't sold that at all, just for transparency. Um. Again, it's it's just not because it's not an endorsement because it's not because Cryptonary haven't done an endorsement. I haven't done any research on it yet, or I don't know if they're going or we're going to. I don't know yet. Um, but I've said that depending on if it is good or isn't good, I will take it to zero or I'll ride it right up. I'm not going to sell those bags now or anytime soon. So let's let's see. Um, but yeah, I, I I've taken a little bit of backlash for this. So um, I, yeah. Do you think Bitcoin can top 150? Uh, sorry, no, I've skipped some questions. Sorry. Yeah, well, yeah. So this uh, this is a key point. I've discussed. A friend of mine is big big on crypto. Um, what if retail doesn't come back? Everyone because everyone is skint. Uh, everyone has no money. Um, it's possible. It's it's really possible. So that is that is the one thing that slightly worry not worries me, but it could be the reason that it doesn't come back. For instance. Um, or retail doesn't come back. Uh, again, we just have, we're just going to have to see how it plays out. Um, but it's very interesting at that point. I think because these interest rates, they've taken away the savings of individuals. So because people's mortgages have gone up in, in terms of like servicing the cost of it. So that's, that's a real key point, I think. Uh, again, it's hard to know. We're just going to have to see. So is it a good time to buy PopCat for someone who doesn't hold? Again, I would layer those orders between 30 cents and 40 cents. I really would. And just see what you can clip off. If you can't, you can't. We'll have to reassess. But there will be a point in time where it pulls back substantially again, whether that's from a much higher level or it's from here. Hard to really know. But when it does do those more major pullbacks, that's when I'd be looking to get the position. Um, what's your thoughts on Shadow Mainnet? I don't know enough about Shadow. The price action looked really manipulated to me by like insiders. And it was being sold into every time the price went up substantially. Um, I sold it. I'm not in it. I'm not looking to buy back again just because I didn't like the price action. It looked too manipulated. And then I have a distrust of it. Um, but again, that might be not educated. And that might not be an educated opinion at all. Um, it just it feels not right for me now. Last cycle, everyone was at home getting checks, not going to work. This time, cost of living is going on, etc. Yeah, we've we've covered that. I I do I do somewhat agree. Let's see. Do you think Bitcoin can top 150k? I actually don't think it will. I think we top out around like 110, 130. I think ETH will top like eight, nine k. I think Solana. I think Solana will go to four, five hundred minimum. If we do see real euphoria, I think it's like eight hundred to a thousand. It just depends on how the cycle finishes. How euphoric. The cycle does finish um but i think there's still substantial upside from here are there any more questions if not we will wrap it up there's a couple more and we've been exactly an hour on the dot so pretty good overall no no more questions that's it we're done i um, i hope that was good for everyone they enjoyed it um if you could give me feedback that would be great as well and uh, yeah, see you all tomorrow for a market update. Thanks, everyone.